as you watch this lecture, think about it in the context of the exercises that we're going to be doing this week that lead up to the final project of the week in which we create a composition using three different lines with different personalities that all interact in some way. All right. Introduction to line. So what is a line? A point set in motion, three parts of form. One, a point, no dimensions, no height, no width. So in the purest sense, a line is just that path, that path that something is following. Two, line, a point in motion capable of infinite variety. That point is in motion, it can do anything, right? Three, contours, shapes bounded or bordered by line, an outline. So the outline of something, a silhouette, the border of it. There are many types of actual lines, each varying in weight, width, direction, orientation, character. The line itself can have many different properties. So an actual line being a continuous line, right? It can have thickness variation, it can be straight. B, the points in an implied line are automatically connected by the eye. So here, the line is not continuous. Here, the line is not continuous. It's an implied line because your brain is going to connect this point with that point and all these points together to create a line. C. When one object points to another, the eye connects the two in a physical psychic line excuse me, a psychic line. There's no real line, but the placement of the objects cause the viewer to look in a certain direction. So if somebody points, like you're in the classroom, you point at the clock, you see a psychic line from the finger to the clock. Psychic line. Somebody's looking in a certain direction, and that creates a line in the sense that you see where, the, where they are looking. Actual and implied lines. So here we have implied lines, right? Because there's this change of direction which creates the implied line. There's no actual line there, but you can see a line there because these all belong together, these all belong together, and here's the border between them. Implied lines. So here, there are implied lines in the sense of the pianos. They're all facing a certain direction, and you can follow these lines through to see the way that the lines are implied to create a sense of unity to make you feel like these different parts of the composition are working together because they have lines that follow through. The lines of the stage they're broken up, but you get a sense that these lines all belong together. So you could look for your own idea of how lines are implied in this composition. The direction of a line can lead the eye of a viewer, right? So here, you can look and see sort of a psychic line, an implied line happening. She's looking at this guy, who's sort of looking over here at her. She's looking back this way. She's looking back this way, kind of leads you back there. Maybe it leads you to the elbow here, and then to his waistband there. And then it could come around here and maybe it comes up here. So notice how this composition has these different implied lines and then psychic lines that lead you around the image. Actual implied and psychic lines organize the composition. Line and shape. Defining shape and form. Line describes shape 
and shapes describe objects, right? So these are sort of outlines, borderlines, contours, and they imply the shape, right? Here's the shape that the line is creating. Artistic shorthand. Line is a quick way to show or define a shape. Contour lines. So contours in their simplest form are the outlines, right? But then you can explore internal contours as well. The contour can be the contour of the shine, maybe the shine on this olive. Reflective objects can have a lot of really interesting internal contours. But in its simplest concept, the contour is the outline. Here's the contour of the wrinkles. There's the outlines, the internal contours here, the contours of some wood grain. Cross contours are lines that would move across a form and describe the dimensionality in that form. So here is a blanket up being thrown in the air and it has this really interesting topography to it and you can really see all the little nooks and crannies in here, the complex shape described by the cross contours. Some birch trees here, simpler, but these cross contours describe the roundness of those trees. They're also implied lines because you can follow the lines, right? But they're broken up. So this is almost like a implied cross contour. Expressing mood and motion. The quality of a line can imply a mood or emotion. Types of line, thick, heavy, thin, delicate, rough, smooth. So lines can have a lot of different personalities. They can be happy, sad, excited, Lines convey mood and feeling. Line is created by movement, so that point moving through space. Line is capable of infinite variety. We've discussed that. Our eyes tend to follow line and complete implied lines. Some different adjectives that could describe different types of line. So think about, you know, what would this one be? Would it be bouncy or nervous? This one would be undulating. This could be like curvy. This could be excited. Maybe oceany. <laughs> There's all kinds of adjectives you could describe. Graceful. So think about how you might describe these different types of lines. You can even sort of make up adjectives. This is a painting by Jackson Pollock, and he's actually splattering paint on the ground to create the energy in a painting. And the painting is really about the energy of the movements that he did as he was creating it. He was kind of dancing around over the painting, splattering this paint, creating these sort of excited, energetic types of line some really great variation that creates visual interest, thick lines, thin lines. This one's sort of more organized, where the lines are swirling. They're organized in the sense that they're sort of set up in these straight blocks, these, this uh, sort of linear pattern, but they become squiggly, swirly, they have a lot of energy to them. You feel like they're created quickly. You can imagine the way that they're created. How would you describe these lines? A little more erratic. These ones seem to have gestural quality. They almost suggest human figures in a way.
What about these lines? Little details, little squiggles, cuts, curves, textured. You can feel it. It's kind of coarse, coarse lines, staccato. Maybe sketchy lines. I think this is Francis Bacon here, this artist. These sketchy lines in the background, sort of architectural, geometric. This is actually pins that are placed onto a canvas and strings tied to each of the pins that connect. Looks like they might connect to every other pin on the page. And it creates this matrix of lines, a field of lines, a sense of organization. There's a close up. Very organized lines here, straight, um, obsessive, maybe. And there's these thicker lines coming through and then lighter lines going across. They create value, the degree of darkness. There's lighter lines that are close together, thicker lines that come through. So even just straight lines can do so many different things. They can create a sense of dimensionality a sense of depth as if it's reaching back into space. This is made of wire or maybe some kind of uh, rods that are welded together. And how they affect the space, they're actually lines in a physical space that change that space. A sense of depth again here. A series of little line drawings all together. How each of the slight variation creates some visual interest, but they're all similar enough to create a sense of unity. And then your eye is drawn to the lines that are different. Your eye is brought to the areas where you see different types of line. Sort of woven feeling. Blotchy, hairy lines. More kind of like spotty moldy lines, line density. So having all these lines together and creating a dense area that builds up and creates a sense of value and then lighter lines up here that have a lighter value. So value meaning lightness and darkness. So ultimately, you'll use what you've learned from the different exercises that we're doing this week in order to create your final drawing, which I'll go into more detail on the uh, week one agenda video. But basically, you're going to create a composition that consists of three different lines. At least one line must touch the edge of the picture plane. Experiment with horizontal and vertical compositions. So you'll have done a series of exercises that will help you get to this stage. But think about how these lines are working together, how they might have different personalities, um, how they work together to create a composition, having them push to the edge of the space, filling up the space in an interesting way. They don't have to fill up the entire space, but using three lines, the lines are interacting. The lines have personality, they um, activate the space, um, they have vertical and horizontal elements to them. Some more examples, 
of these types of compositions, lines working together, creating an interesting dynamic composition it has energy, the lines have personality. How do the lines interact? This one's kind of clever using the implied line running down the middle and also using outlines, contours, right? And then actual lines as well. So that's kind of a clever approach to the assignment. Here, three different types of lines sort of becoming one line. Another clever approach. And you can interpret it in slightly different ways, like, you know, this sort of center space running through the line is the line that's created by lines. This line has lines in it. So there's this is sort of a different take on three types of line. A lot of interaction with the lines here creating a sense of shallow space, some depth. 